Hey, Jeff at Sweet Sounds here in Mankato, Minnesota. Been a busy year with boat projects. That's a big boat project we've got going on. We'll do that one in another video. But right now, we're going to talk about this Premier Sun Station 230 pontoon that came in for some upgrades. So this was kind of a, an interesting project. Um, these folks gave us a call. We're wondering when they could um, come down and have a consultation. Um, so they ended up coming down, and they actually ended up just leaving the boat with us that day. Basically, they were having some problems um, with the radio. They weren't sure if it was working right, um, if it was turning on or cutting out, and, and what was going on with it. But um, we think the radio ended up actually being okay. It was just um, just a switch not in the right position is kind of what we believe. But they also wanted to do some other audio upgrades in here. And, and in the long run, we ended up actually replacing the radio because of the audio upgrades that they wanted to do. So kind of two birds with a whole same stone at that point in time. So this pontoon actually had a pretty decent audio system in it to begin with. Um, so I believe it was a dealer upgrade. It came with a Rockford Fosgate head unit. We'll get into some of this equipment a little more detailed in a minute. But it came with a Rockford Fosgate head unit, a Rockford Fosgate five channel amp, which is actually great to see already. Um, so then two front speakers inside, two rear speakers inside, along with a subwoofer. Uh, it was installed quite nice. It was a good layout. Wiring was done pretty well on this thing, surprisingly, actually, because we see a lot of boats and a lot of pontoons where the wiring's terrible. We have to go through and fix up a lot of the stuff that was, was done previously. So but these customers wanted to add some audio both out the front and the back so that when they have the grandkids with them um, and they're out swimming in the back and they got the lily pad out there and whatnot, that they can go ahead and have audio on the outside without having to blast the stereo on the inside. So it's nice, you know, the adults maybe want to hang out and have a cocktail or two and sit back and get some sun without having to have the audio system all the way up. But of course, if the kids want music out back, if you don't have any speakers out back, it's kind of difficult to do. In addition, it's not all that uncommon that these folks like to pull up to the sandbar and play music at the sandbar. So having a set of speakers out the front, of course, takes care of that. So let's go ahead and go through the front of this pontoon, and then we will skip back and talk a little bit more about the equipment, what we all installed in here, what we took out of here, whatnot and then we'll get up and we'll take a listen to it. So we, of course, do a lot of JBL Infinity uh, Marine equipment. They're one of the largest speaker manufacturers there is. They build absolutely phenomenal equipment. We've been super happy with it. I run it in my own boat for a number of years now, and it's fantastic. So these are the Infinity Kappa Marine speakers. That's Infinity's high-end Marine speaker, same as the JBL Stadium. They're basically the same thing, with a slightly different shell and a different logo on them. Same company, both. Harman International Audio Companies. They run JBL, they run Harman, they run Infinity and but Revel and a whole another of uh, a bunch of other audio lines too. So they build fantastic equipment. We've loved them for a long time. Super durable, excellent features, excellent sound quality. And of course, these ones also have lights on them. So one of the cool things about these series of speakers is they have both an internal and an external LED light on them. So you can see the outer ring around here that's actually lighting up the outside and the backside. Then they also have an internal light inside of there which lights up the cone. So these are actually some of the brightest and best looking speakers you can find when it comes to LEDs. And these happen to match up with the existing stuff inside. We'll get into that a little bit further. And they sound awesome. So it really takes care of, uh, takes care of everything as far as that goes. So I want to point out a couple things right off the bat. Some of the things we do regarding the installation. A lot of times you don't ever get a chance to see, but are every bit of it as important as the equipment you choose as to how the installation gets done. So first off, everything we install gets installed with stainless steel fasteners, and then we use aluminum and plastics and composites. It's extremely rare, like almost never happens as far as we use wood. If we do, it would be a marine grade plywood, but even that we, we rarely, rarely use. And then stainless steel or aluminum fasteners for everything we do. So can't tell you how many boats, pontoons we fixed up over the years where they use drywall screws and crap like that. Um, we don't ever use crimp connectors. We take the time to solder everything that we do. We then use a heat shrink on that, but it's not just the normal heat shrink either. It's actually a heat shrink that has an adhesive liner inside of it so that when you heat up that heat shrink, 
to melt it down and shrink it, it actually turns that adhesive into kind of a liquid form and that liquid forms around our soldered connection. And it's literally a sealed connection for well, forever as far as that goes. It'll, it'll last a lot longer than the pontoon's ever gonna be on the water for. So that's a little bit how we go about doing everything. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath there just so you can kind of get an idea what's going on here. So that is the horn. We did not install that, that was already existing here. But it gives you kind of an idea of how we run our wires. Everything is loomed. So it has ultimate protection on that. And then you'll notice that these screws, if you can see those up there, those are actually stainless steel fasteners. And then on a pontoon like this with the full underskin on that, we actually have to do quite a bit of disassembly. We actually have to take off um, several parts of this pontoon in order to be able to run wires all the way through these things. So no real way to get the wires tied up you can kind of shove them up underneath there, but then they're all just gonna be falling down and causing problems. So we take the time to actually remove the panels necessary to run the wires properly, get them all tied up, and that works out great. And now we're never gonna to have to worry about a problem regarding the wire. So let's go ahead and slide on to the back here and talk a little bit more about the equipment and why we did what we did in here. So. As I mentioned, this had a Rockford Fosgate PMX2 radio. In there. Actually, it's a nice radio, but the radio only has two sets of outputs. And two sets of outputs for the RCAs is not enough to be able to give us the flexibility to control both the inside speakers and the outside speakers and the subwoofers independently. And in fact, the previous system wasn't even making use of the, uh, the RCAs very well that are on this radio. So we took that radio out. We went to the new Kenwood Exelon, the XM500. This has got three sets of five volt pre outs on there, which is a very nice thing to have. Better at a signal noise ratio. And I can tell you in this particular pontoon, unfortunately, that the LEDs that were already installed in this pontoon were creating a little bit of noise. And the further up you have your gains, the more noise you have, the lower voltage you have on the radio, the more you have to have your gains up to get the proper output out of that amplifier in order to match your gains on your amplifier with the output from the radio. So the Rockford only being a two volt radio had to have those gains up a little bit higher. When we swapped out to the Kenwood, the five volt, we were able to bring those gains down that reduced some of the overall noise being picked up from those LEDs. So that was a nice little thing right there. Then as far as what we added to it, of course we did the two sets of the Infinity Kappa Marine speakers. Those are six and a half inch speakers. It's a nominal size. They're actually probably closer to seven and a half inches. They are absolutely massive speakers. They pretty much never fit in any existing holes. So we pretty much usually have to enlarge them if we're using an existing spot. They, but they sound fantastic. I love how they sound. And then we used uh, Harman also. It's the JBL line, but like I mentioned earlier, same company. That's the Club A754. Not everybody knows, but the Club Series are actually marine grade amplifiers in fact the marina amplifiers are the same as these club amplifiers just in white so we chose to use the black one in here same amplifier same internal same sealant on same coated circuit board so club a754 matches up perfectly well with those speakers and gives us independent control on the external speakers versus the internal speakers so let's go ahead and take a look at the back so we did two speakers out the back also let's look at that one there and then one over on this side also, again with the LEDs. And one thing I wanna point out, you may have noticed that the speakers on the inside of the boat also have LEDs. So those ones already had LEDs on them, but we wanted to be able to match up as close as we could to them. You can notice that the LEDs on our speakers are very, very close to the LEDs on the existing rings. So that worked out quite well. Looks great, sounds great. This thing jams, sounds wonderful. One thing I always like to point out, we don't work on people's boats with our shoes on. So shoes off, let's go ahead and climb up here and take a look and see what else was done in here. So let's slide over to here. As I mentioned, those speakers were existing. That's existing Rockford Fosgate speaker, existing Rockford Fosgate subwoofer, along with the existing Rockford Fosgate speakers on the opposite side. What we did, of course, is add the extra amplifier, swap out the radio, and then added a USB along with dual charging voltmeters on there. So, might be a little bit hard to see that tucked down in there, but that 
allows you to keep a tabs on what the voltage is in the boat. So you know if you're out sitting on the shore, sitting on the sandbar for a while, and you wanna make sure to run out of battery, you can just simply look at that. In addition, you can flip this cover up and you've got two USB 3.0. Those are quick charge ports, so you can recharge your phone, your tablet, very fast using that. And of course we left the auxiliary power port all alone. The new Kenwood radio is a great fit right where the original Rockford radio was. Looks excellent in there. And then, as I mentioned, let's go ahead and crawl down here and open this up. The, uh, the original system, I'll show some pictures after the video is done because this is kind of stuff that's a little bit hard to see, but the original Rockford amplifier is tucked over here and actually did a pretty nice job. It's mounted on a, on a piece of plastic up there, which is secure to the back wall. Um, the wiring was not great for it. After we got done moving a couple things around in here, we found that the ground wire for that amplifier actually came off and caused a no sound situation. It was going into protect mode at that time. So we went ahead, we double checked all of the original wires on that to make sure that they were all secure and not weren't gonna have any other problems. And then you can see exactly how we installed ours. And again, I'll, I'll throw pictures up of this, but a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner even. You can see we also installed our amplifier on a piece of three quarter inch PVC. And then that PVC is actually bolted through the console with stainless steel fasteners so that you can see the big stainless steel washers. Those are on both sides. So that thing's gonna be super, super secure all the wires tied all the way and then route around in the corner so we never have to worry about anything really getting caught on those. So Tech did another wonderful job making this thing nice and clean. So let's go ahead and take a little listen to this thing. So why did we swap out that radio? I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, the existing radio only had two sets of outputs on that. So there was no ability to control inside and outside speakers. And of course, if we're going to be, let's say cruising around at sunset, we don't wanna be blasting the stereo on the outside of the pontoon, that doesn't make sense. Likewise, we wanna have independent control when the kids are out swimming off the back, or maybe you're doing some tubing, things like that. You want the stereo on the outside of the boat to be a lot louder than on the inside of the boat. And the new radio gives us all of those controls, very easy to do. We just actually use the fader all the way to the front is the inside speakers, all the way to the rear is the outside speakers, and gives you quick access to the subwoofer control also in there. So let's go ahead and turn this up. Now my recording device is probably going to kick into concert mode because it gets pretty darn large as far as the system goes, but let's go ahead and take a listen to it real quick. Let me just see what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and hit rewind. That song just about done. The speakers inside sound good. The speakers outside sound quite a bit better. The uh, Infinities we put in are uh, definitely upgrade from these, but still sounds very nice. It's like I feel it for the first time. Been thinking about you all night. I've been searching for this all That is another wonderful audio system installed by the experts here at Sweet Sounds. And as I tell everybody I talk to, one of the most important things when it comes to getting audio system and lighting systems done 
in your boat or your pontoon doing a big upgrade in that one over there also really massive upgrade going in that one that the design and implementation the design is absolutely critical to making sure that the results are exactly what the client expects when we're all done we want to know ahead of time that the client is going to get what they expected and the system is going to work for their needs and sitting down and having a consultation is the only way to achieve that with really high reliability so if you are looking at getting an audio system done in your boat your pontoon your side by side your rv car truck pretty much anything else on the road motorcycles of course Give the experts here at Sweet Sounds a call, 507-345-8863. If you want to see some of our other work, check us out on our YouTube or check us out on our website, sweetsounds.com. And like I mentioned, I'll put up a couple pictures at the end of this video here so you can kind of see the, a little bit of the internals of all of this entire system. Stay safe. Take care.